Hey guys, Dave with Airspool here, and the research has been conducted, strategies have been drafted, and decisions have been made in terms of which refrigerants will be replacing R410A. And likely it'll be one of the two shown here, R32 or R454B, and we'll talk about why those two, when this is happening, and how or if it will be affecting you personally. So refrigerants, not real great for the environment. R12, R22, especially bad, created a crisis back in the 80s and 90s. Actually, back in 1974, a couple scientists found that a hole was forming over Antarctica because the refrigerants had both had chlorine in that, them that was attaching to the ozone molecules in the stratosphere, breaking them down and so UV radiation, UVB, didn't have anything to stop it. Luckily, this was over, I guess luckily, over Antarctica, not where more people live, because this amount of UVB radiation would likely give people skin cancer and cataracts, kill off plankton, and affect photosynthesis. So in fact, the ecology in general could be worse than just having a little bit of cataract and skin cancer problem. But it took 22 years, but in 1996, R12 was banned for new manufacturer importing of new machines and 2010, same way with R22. So R134A pretty much supplanted R12, R410A took over for R22. And the problem with these two new refrigerants is that they both had a high, had zero for ODP, ozone depleting potential, but high higher, and especially in the case of 410A, global warming potential. And so whether you buy into it or not, the EPA did and does buy into it. They looked at from 1850 prior for 80,000 years, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere was around 250 parts per million. That started to jump up at the beginning of the industrial age, really ramped up after 1900 to the point where it's 423 parts per million now. And the temperature has also been going up and pretty much perfect correlation to the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere to the amount of temperature increase. So temperatures are up about 1.5 degrees Celsius now at this point, over 1850. So a little bit less than three degrees Fahrenheit. And you may be affected by global warming or climate change already if you own a, or work at a ski resort or if you're a farmer or if you happen to live in California, Texas, or Florida, where there's been more of these multi-billion dollar catastrophic events, which have been affecting your, tripling your insurance. So anyway, the EPA is a believer. They're capping the global warming potential of refrigerants at 700, starting 1-1 of 2025. So both R32 and R454B comply with this. R454B, especially low GWP of only 466 versus 675 for R32. So a lot of manufacturers saying, hey, we don't want to keep on screwing around every couple of years, changing our refrigerant. Let's commit to 454B now and we should be good until maybe it goes, the EPA limits the max at 500 or whatever. So that's part of this part of the strategy. And also 410A and 454B isn't exactly a drop-in refrigerant, but it's a similar efficiency and similar pressure to running 410A machines. So it was less work to change the current machines to work with 454B. And then there's the factor for both these refrigerants, not a good factor. Both of them are A2L refrigerants. A3 is the most flammable, but I'd be like propane. Other refrigerants like we've had in the past have A1, not flammable at all. So the bad news, these new refrigerants, they're slightly flammable. Okay, so R32, actually, you need 14% concentrate in the air for it to torch. R454B, only 11%. But R32, once it ignites, it's more propagating of the flame. But really, there's a guy named, or goes by Tomcat on YouTube. See if you can find his video. It shows in a closed chamber testing 
propane, 454B, and 32. And you can see that if there's a spark up to these, it doesn't do anything. If there's an open flame, it'll light as long as the open flame's there. You take away the open flame, they won't ignite. But you can imagine larger units like the ones that are being used for 454B here, they're... If you had one of these units up on the um, rooftop and there's a lot of it coming out, and there's a fire, potentially it could be a real problem. And it's something that technicians that work with the refrigerants are going to have to get certified, learn how to work with these two refrigerants, probably line set connectivity, other things going to change slightly. So I guess we're taking one for the team here, getting these for now anyway, maybe 10 years from now, there'll be no GWP, no OWP. Uh, a1 a flammability, but right now this is what we have and this is what's going to help our grandkids have more stability in terms of the global warming and climate change. So we're taking one for the team for them at this point, I think. And meanwhile, R32, already very well established in Europe and Asia. So already 160 million machines are out there. Probably another 40 million machines once North America comes online here every year. And R32, the rumor had it that Daikin had patents on R32. Nobody has had patents on R32 since maybe 1960. It's been unpatented since 1980 or whatever. Um, it was first developed in the 1960s. And so it's in 410A. Half of our 410A is R32. And it's in... 454B, 69% is R32. And so it's already well known. The patents that Daikin had is that it was how to manage within a closed system, within one of these split systems or mini split, how to maximize the efficiency of R32. But they've opened up those patents and are allowing anyone to use them. Why? Because they may manufacture both R32 units and they manufacture the refrigerants. So it's probably good news for them the more people that are using R32. There are many other manufacturers of R32 too though. So A, it's probably gonna be less expensive than 454B because it isn't patented, which 454B is patented. And also you need less of it to run a machine. So a lot of re-engineering these, these machines, but once that's done, they can run potentially with 40% less refrigerant. And so they're needing a lot less energy. And so the manufacturers of R32 claiming, oh, well, EPA, look at the fact that we're not needing to use as much electricity, so we're not burning as much natural gas or coal to run these machines, because that's how electricity is still mostly made these days. So they probably got a lobbying effort in Washington saying, keep us at our higher GWP because we're actually lower in when you look at the grand scheme of thing and probably four or five or B is saying the exact opposite. And they also, 32 also claims that, oh, there's, we're a single refrigerant. We're not a mixture of R32 and R1234YF, like that's the other 31% in R454B. And so if there's, if there were a leak in a R454B machine and more R32 got out than 1234YF, then maybe there's the temperature at which the refrigerant changes state could be different. And then that when that temperature changes state being different, that would take more changing to the expansion valves, be less predictable. And so to avoid that, you'd suck out all the refrigerant and start with new R454B, which could be expensive. But R454B is claiming, no, in fact, we're just like R410A. There's no glide issue. And that one, uh, we'll have to see what happens here in the coming years, which is right. And so, yes, R454B has been found or is going to be found in bigger units. Train carrier, York, made by Johnson Controls. All, as I witnessed at the AHR show a couple weeks ago in Chicago, going with 454B, okay? Some larger manufacturers like Lennox are opting for R32. I'm sure some smaller manufacturers are opting for uh, 454B. 
But in general, these larger units, Emerson, the maker of some of these larger unit compressors, going with 454B. And yes, R32, very dominant, already in Europe and in Asia, and mini splits, and mini splits, and VRF, variable refrigerant flow unit. So, in larger, you're probably going to see this, or you are seeing this at in larger, duct, in larger ductless VRF units that have large 10-ton condenser and multiple indoor heads will be probably running R32. And yeah, so. Both these, you're going to see both these probably. Jury's still out in terms of which one, if there's be a winner, but probably both of them will be around. R410A is not going away right away. Just the production, manufacturing, importation after 1-1 in 2025. But distributors have three years to sell off their existing inventory. Jugs of 410A probably going to be around well into the 2030s. We at Air Spool, starting 1-1-2025, are going to have an R32 solar-powered mini-split. So check out airspool.com. Subscribe to Air Spool if you have an interest in solar. If you want to keep the dialogue going, we appreciate that on our YouTube channel here called Air Spool. Thanks for your time.